here's Brody Brazil. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually kind of excited to do this video. It's all about the explanation of wing flaps. What are they? Why do you need them? Why do they help you? Where are they? How do they work? There's actually a lot more than you think to get into here. What is the definition of a wing flap on an airplane? It's a secondary control surface, usually hinged flaps, on the inboard trailing edge of each wing. Yeah, I guess you can't have flaps on just one wing or the other. You, you need them on both symmetrically. Uh, these flaps, they can be raised or lowered depending on what you're trying to accomplish here. Uh, where are the wing flaps? Oh, yeah, that just helps my description. You've seen these before. You understand them, but there's different types. They do different things. You can use them to different extents. Like I said, depending on what you're actually trying to do. But what exactly is happening here with flaps? Number one, they modify modern airfoils to allow safe, slow flight necessary for landing, right? This is all a slow flight activity when you use flaps. You're not using flaps at higher airspeed. In fact, there are flaps limitation speeds. You can't throw out your flaps higher than the white arc on an airplane. So to understand that these are specifically in slow flight situations, that's obvious, but I definitely want to point it out here. They help you fly slower and safer and more accurately. So what's happening here? How does, how does a, a wing with flaps, how does that help you out with the flaps extended? Number one, with the flap extension, you're usually getting a camber increase across the top and bottom part of the wing, the upper and lower camber, which is in tandem providing more lift, but also more drag at the very same time. So understand that this is... This is one of those unique aspects of flying. It doesn't just provide you lift or just provide you drag. It actually gives you a little bit of both. I'll explain more on that in just a second. As for the extra lift, usually that helps to lower the stall speed, helps you get a slower approach, can make a safer landing, right? That's why a no-flaps landing, you're generally coming in at a 10 to 15 knot higher airspeed than normal, depending on the aircraft you're flying. And that requires more runway distance, a different landing attitude. But that's why you practice these no flap landings so that just in case they're stuck or the flap motor is broken, that you, that you know how to safely land the airplane. I will tell you this, an asymmetrical flap situation, I've never had one, but it does not sound like a treat at all in trying to navigate that airplane directionally down to a runway. You think about what a flap surface could do stuck on one side, unstuck on the other, right? It gets, it gets pretty dangerous pretty quickly. But also this, uh, flaps allow you to have a lower angle of attack at a slower airspeed, which actually gives you better forward visibility. Let me try and explain this here with the 737. Um, if you're trying to go a little bit slower, Generally, that's just holding the nose up, right? Well, if you're coming down making this descent to land, you might have a hard time visibility-wise if the nose is pointed up. Adding flaps will let you descend at that same rate. It'll add a little bit more of that drag and change the aerodynamics as such so that you don't need to be as, as nose up. Like I said, lower angle of attack, giving you that better forward visibility of the aiming point and of the runway environment. So that's one that not a lot of people actually even consider, but flaps are important in that way. Extra drag obviously can give you a steeper descent. So if you're trying to uh, manage some obstacles in the runway environment, trying to you know come over them, uh, you can come in a bit steeper with flaps. Think about that for just a second. A better obstacle clearance, I guess I just got into that. So obviously extra drag can can help you out. Maybe you were just coming in too fast. Throw your flaps in earlier. A longer time with that extra drag is going to slow you down. But I also want you to think about this. The first 20 degrees of flaps. Now, depending off if your general aviation airplane has 30 total or 40 total of flaps, depending on when it was made or what type it is, the first 20 degrees of flaps are mostly lift. And the rest of it is mostly drag. That's the biggest takeaway I hope you get from this video. And maybe it's even different. Maybe it's 15. But I'll, I'll say here for the purpose of this, the first 20 degrees mostly lift, the rest of it mostly drag. And that's why partial flaps like 10 degrees are used for some airplanes for extra takeoff lift. For example, if you're doing a short field takeoff or a water takeoff, I've flown the de Havilland Beaver. Oh, Great airplane. 
But here's the trick. Unless you have flaps in at all on a water takeoff, right? If you're just straight clean, flaps at zero, it's hard to get the airplane to lift off the water. I kid you not. It just will not unstick from the water. Full power, headwind, whatever. It's just hard to get it to unstick. You throw in, actually, you kind of pump in 10 degrees of flaps. Oh, you lift right off. No problem. Same thing if you're trying to do a short field takeoff, depending on the, the POH or the manual of your aircraft, it's likely going to tell you on a short field takeoff to use those 10 degrees of flaps to get you off the ground sooner. More lift than drag at those 10 degrees. Uh, there's different types of flaps, a plane flap, a split flap. I, I could describe them here, but the pictures are right on your screen. Uh, you've probably seen a plane and split before. Um, you've definitely seen the slotted flap. If you fly a Cessna 152 or 172, that's a slotted flap. It allows a little bit of airflow actually between the flap and the rest of the wing surface. Then there's the Fowler flap. You see those a lot on airliners. They actually kind of extend out of the back. And then there is the slotted Fowler flap. One's very complex, complicated, not as common. Okay, actuation here of the flaps. You've got manual, you've got electrical, or you've got hydraulic. Manual would be like the Piper, what, what seems to be that, that handbrake between the, the left and right seat up front. You pull it up and it goes, like literally it's connected to a, to a link. And as you pull it up, that's how the flaps uh, extend or retract. Uh, versus in a Cessna, right, it's a motorized switch. You push it down to 10 and the flaps will slowly regulate to 10 or the next notch to 20 or the next notch to 30 or 40 or whatever. Uh, versus hydraulically powered, obviously that's a totally different situation. And, uh, you know, some gears also, some landing gears, if they're retractables, also have these different ways of doing it, either electric or hydraulic or Electrohydraulic, but I digress. So just know that flaps are actuated manually, electrically, or hydraulically. Proper technique when using flaps for landings, uh, for short field takeoffs, for slow flight, for power off stalls, for crosswind situations. Maybe that's later here on a different slide. You may not want to use all your flaps, but obviously for landings, you're probably using flaps. For short field takeoffs and slow flight and for stall practice situations, you're using these flaps. Power off stall, I should say. But know your flap speeds and all of that, right? Anytime you might be using flaps, know your flap speeds and your limits. I point that out because G load tolerance is much less with your flaps out. When you talk about what an airplane is capable of G load wise, that's considering the airplane is completely clean. Those flap surfaces are not as strong as the wing surfaces. Okay, I want to make that very clear. So the G-load tolerance, what your airplane is capable of is in a fully clean situation, not with the flaps out. And the same thing with flap speeds. Got to tell you, I've flown with a lot of student pilots who are, are doing 120 on, uh, <laughs> on final of the airport. Oh, I want to slow down. And they're not in a retractable. I'll put the flaps out. Whoa. Whoa, flap speed here is like, what, 85, 90 on this airplane. You cannot dump the flaps in at 120. Not safe. One of them, both of them might rip off, or we might get into that asymmetrical situation I was just talking about. That could be very bad. So know your flap speeds and know your limitations. For takeoff, if you're using those 10 degrees of flaps on a water, a water takeoff or a short field takeoff, uh, retract the flaps only after the obstacles have been cleared. I think that's obvious, but once you take away those 10 degrees of flaps, you're going to get that sink. That lift is not going to be the same. It produces more lift than drag, and on the backside, it produces more drag than lift. But on a go-around, here's something that I also think needs to be explained. Raise the flaps incrementally to avoid sink. I cannot tell you how many times I saw that. Go-around, full power, carb heat in, all that stuff. I should say carb heat out, all that stuff. And then the flaps, we just pull them all out at once. And all of a sudden, all that climbing you're trying to doing is degraded by the fact that lift that you had in there is instantly going away all at once. So what I like to teach, especially in a retractable gear situation, if you have a couple notches of flaps, it'd be like this. Maintain a positive rate of climb, right? Clear your obstacles, flaps, take away one notch, then bring the gear up, and then flaps, and then flaps. But all of this, as you continue to climb and all of this over time, don't think it's flaps, gear, flaps, flaps, like it's a race. 
it's literally, okay, we were going around, added full power, you know, maintain a runway heading direction usually, depending on what you're doing. Clear the obstacles. Okay, flaps. Might get a little sink once that's established. Okay, gear. All right, we're climbing. Maybe that's a little bit sooner. You're trying to get rid of that, that gear drag. Flaps, gear. Okay, now we're still climbing. Good rate, flaps, flaps. Flaps, gear, flaps, flaps. Generally is what I do. A more proper technique, consider a 20 degree setting, maybe even less, maybe just 10 of flaps for gusty or crosswind landing conditions. Now, remember, you're not going to get as much drag, but you're also not going to get as much of that crosswind effect with less flaps. That's kind of the, the theory behind that, especially with high wing airplanes, where a lot of that crosswind gets trapped on the fuselage, the sides of the aircraft and trapped, like where the flaps are coming down right next to the, the body. So consider a lesser flap setting for gusty or crosswind landing conditions. Uh, in a gusty condition, you just might be making a faster landing, right? You don't know if you're going to have that headwind or if it's going to go away. So a faster approach, a faster, relatively faster landing, you want less flap setting there. Um, also want to tell you that flap extension in a high wing like a Cessna 172 causes more nose pitching up, more airflow around the horizontal stabilizer. This is something that I think a lot of beginning pilots realize is happening, but they don't exactly know why it's happening. And this is going to be hard for me to describe in my 737, but let's imagine that the wings are up here, right? So you put the flap down. Now you're getting more of that airflow to come across the horizontal stabilizer, like on the tail of the airplane. What does that horizontal stabilizer do? It doesn't actually lift the tail up. It per The more effective it is, the more tail down force it provides. So if you're throwing more air because the flaps are directing more air over that horizontal stabilizer, it's more effective. It's pushing the tail down, tail down force. It's pushing the nose up. So that's why sometimes if you're right at flap speed and you put in your flaps, whoa, you feel the nose kind of pitch up and you kind of put that forward pressure to bring it back down. That is why that's happening. Okay. Wow. Did we just spend like a dozen minutes <laughs> explaining wing flaps? Yeah, we did. There's there's a lot to it. These are a critical part of your flying. And I would say the, the most important other thing to understand here is knowing how to use them and when to use them is equal to knowing what they do and how they do it. Yeah, the book part of it is important, like to understand what is it doing. But to actually know how to use them effectively from the stick and rudder aspect, I think that is probably most valuable. Thanks for being here on the channel. Subscribe if you like this type of content. I would really appreciate that to see more of you here. Also, thumbs up on this video if it provided you value. That would greatly help me out. I'll see you next time.